Hello everyone, in this session we will be diving into the basics of accounts, the general ledger or simply the ledger, and the chart of accounts. These are the key building blocks for understanding how businesses track their finances. We will also introduce new asset accounts, new liability accounts, such as prepaid assets or prepaid expenses, unearned revenues, accrued liabilities, you will need these accounts for future sessions and future lectures. So we are planting the seed in this chapter. You want to learn the meaning of these new accounts. You want to know what is a prepaid, what's unearned revenue. You also want to know how a general ledger works in general or how the ledger works in general. As I mentioned, those are the backbones of any accounting information system, whether it's manual or computerized. No one uses manual systems anymore, but a computerized system would always have a general ledger, a chart of accounts. So you want to be familiar with those terms because they manifest themselves in different ways, depending on what type of a software you are running. At the end of this recording, we will work a multiple choice questions. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses. We cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. So let's start by defining what is an account. Now, to explain an account, I want you to think of an account that is relevant to you or you can think of. And the closest thing you can think of should be your bank account. So most likely you have a bank account, whether it's a savings account or a checking account. Well, what is the purpose of a bank account? Well, obviously it saves your money, but what does it show you? If you have a bank account, it's going to show you the following. It's going to show you the increases and the decreases in your cash balance. What does that mean? Most likely when you open an account, you are going to make a deposit. You deposit it. $5,000. That's a plus. At some point, you are going to withdraw some money. Well, what is that going to do? That's going to reduce your account by 1000 So we started with 5000 We withdrew 1000 Now your balance, your account is 4000 Then you deposited 250 Then you took out $100 then you have a new balance and this is your account balance so what is an account an account is a record as I just showed you of changes changes means increases and decreases in a specific asset liability equity revenue or expense in the case of cash cash is an asset but we don't keep track of cash alone we keep track of all assets like what like accounts receivable supplies, land, inventory. We have all sorts of supplies and we're going to go over the accounts shortly. We keep track of our liabilities. For example, notes payable, which is a loan. Well, what's going to happen is this. We are going to have an account called notes payable. And what are we going to do with this account when we borrow money? Let's assume we borrowed $100,000. We are going to increase our notes 100000 Then we're going to start to pay it back 10000 at a time. As we pay it, we are going to reduce the balance. And the account will keep track of the balance. So this is the purpose of the account. Same thing with our equity account. The same thing with our revenues and same thing with our expenses. An account is a record of the changes. It's going to keep track of the balance as the account goes up, as the account goes down. Now, specifically in accounting, we keep track of, of our accounts through something called the general ledger, or simply put for short, the ledger. The general ledger, or simply put, the ledger. Often, this ledger is electronic, computerized. It compiles all the accounts 
and their balances. So where can you find your account balances? For example, if a company wants to know, if a manager wants to know how much cash we have or supplies or inventory, they have to go to the general ledger. And each account will have its own general ledger. Now, most companies share common accounts. For example, all companies will have a cash account. You cannot survive without cash. Now, you might call it cash. You might call it money. You might call it, usually you call it cash. You might call it a savings account. You might call it a checking account. Nevertheless, it's cash. It's money in a bank account. And the company will keep money in a bank account. Most businesses will have an account for supplies because most companies will have some sort of supplies on hand. Most companies will have a notes payable alone. So although... The companies share many accounts. Some companies might have some unique accounts tailored to their operation. For example, if you are in the construction business, the construction business, they have something called long-term construction accounting. They might have a specific account. The point is you can create an account for your own need. It doesn't really matter. However, all accounts will have to go under assets, liability, equity, revenue, or expense. It has to be classified. Now let's review real quick what assets are and name some common accounts. Doesn't mean those are the all accounts, but those are the common accounts. And those are the accounts that you will see in your financial accounting course. Obviously, if you're taking a financial or principles of accounting, you need to be familiar, comfortable with these accounts. This is a review. What is an asset? An assets, an a, an assets are resources, again, owned or controlled. You don't have to own them as long as you control them. And they are expected to provide future benefits. The most common account, the most common asset account that we are all familiar with is the account of cash. Cash is the best account. Cash include money, bank accepted funds, um, traveler's check, coins, a foreign currency, all of that is cash. So the cash account keep track of what? Of the cash at the company through an account called cash. And don't worry, we're going to look at an actual account shortly. Companies would also have an account called accounts receivable. If we remember from the prior session, we looked at something called the revenue recognition. And under the revenue recognition, we say that we recognize revenue when we perform the work. So when we increase revenue, when we say we have revenue, oftentimes or sometimes the customer don't pay. The best thing is when revenue goes up for cash to go up. But sometimes the customer don't pay. When the customer don't pay, what do they give us in return? They give us a promise. The promise to pay, as long as you did the work, is called accounts receivable. So accounts receivable keeps track of amounts owed by customers from credit sales. It means sales we made and they promised to pay us. We're going to increase this account when we make sales on credit. And we're going to reduce this account when the customers pay us. So let's assume we increased revenue by $1,000 and they promise $1,000. Promise means account receivable. We increase account receivable by $1,000. Eventually, the customer will pay us. When the customer pays, we increase cash by $1,000 and we reduce account receivable by $1,000. So notice, account receivable went up, account receivable went down, and we kept track of this through the accounts receivable account. Let's introduce a new account, similar sounding to accounts receivable, but it's called notes receivable. What's the difference between accounts receivable and notes receivable and notes receivable we made sales on credit we sold something we sold goods or services on credit notes receivable in a sense we lend the money so what we did in a notes receivable we lend so we might have we might we might have made a sale but what we ask the customer to do to sign a promissory note to it's a document we ask them to sign it, it's a written promise from another entity to pay a specific amount on a future date, often with interest, always with interest. This is what really differentiates notes from accounts receivable. So let's assume you make a sale and you want to give the customer a time to pay. Well, if that's the case, you can tell them, you, we, you owe us money, we have an account receivable against you, you made a promise. or you can make the sale and you make them sign a promise to pay plus interest. So interest is important here. What makes it notes receivable is the inclusion of interest. It means you are financing the transaction. 
So notes receivable is similar to account receivable with the exception that you charge them interest. Now, don't worry, we're going to have a whole chapter, well, half of a chapter about notes receivable. But this is all what you need to know for now. It's an asset. It goes up when we lend money. It goes down when the customer pays their balance. Prepaid accounts, that's also a new account. And basically, we're starting to plant the seeds for future chapters. Prepaid account is another asset. And this is a new asset. We did not see this asset yet. It's a new asset. What's a prepaid? Prepaid is when the company prepay their cost, prepaid their expenses. But what could be an example? Think of the gas, a gasoline in your gas tank, in your car. If you own a car, this car, you might have filled it with gasoline. The gasoline in your car itself is a prepaid. Why? It represents a prepayment for future expenses. What does that mean? It means you pay for it first. You pay for the gas. You have the gas in your gas tank in the car. Then you expense it. You consume it later. So when you prepay for an expense before it's consumed, it's an asset. You can prepay for your insurance. You can prepay your rent. For example, let's assume you rented a place to live and you prepaid one year. And this, this is very common when you rent a commercial space. Well, if you prepay for one year, guess what have you have an asset. Now, if you prepaid that one year, each month that goes by, your prepaid goes down, it gets consumed. And you can prepay any expense, you can prepaid any expense, any expense can be prepaid. And we'll, we would look at the prepaid later on, we're going to cover we're going to cover them prepaid this account will be covered in a separate recording. But all what you need to know for now is it's an asset and it's established when your cash goes down, you prepay for something. How do you prepay? Your cash goes down and your prepaid goes up. So you prepay for something. Then eventually in the future, you know what's going to happen. The prepaid in the future gets consumed. The prepaid goes down and when once it's consumed, it's going to be turned into an expense. And remember, expenses always go up. And we'll talk about that later. So that's another new account that you need to be familiar with. Supplies is easy. Supplies lists supplies that you have not used. What does that mean? If you have office supplies, papers for the printers, ink for the printers, uh, I don't know, pens, pencils, erasers, those are supplies. Supplies are assets. Supplies are a form of prepaid. Why? Because you're going to have them as asset until they are used. And once they are used, you expense them. And we'll see that later. That's another asset. So supplies is an asset. Later on, we're going to turn supplies into, you guessed it, this is planting a seed for the future. It's going to turn into supplies expense. Just a prepaid account to the all turn into an expense and we'll see that later. So supplies expense and prepaid, they all turn into an expense. Equipment account. Equipment accounts are where we keep track of our equipments, our long-term assets, computers, maybe furniture, an asset whose cost is expensed over time through depreciation. What's special about equipment? We're going to see later. They also get expensed through an account called depreciation. And what is that? Don't worry, we're going to look at depreciation later. But equipments, and we, we, we learned in the prior session and from prior sessions that equipment is a long term asset. It means an asset that served the business for many years. Building accounts, we're going to have a building accounts, warehouses, buildings, keeps track of our buildings. And their cost is also allocated through depreciation. And we might have land as an asset tracks the cost of land that's separate from the building itself. So land is recorded as a separate account. So this is a list of some assets, some common assets you need to be very familiar with for financial accounting students. From assets, we're going to look at liability accounts. Let's review liabilities are obligation debt. And that obligation is to transfer assets, usually cash, or provide product or services. Sometimes you might have to provide a service to others or goods represent, representing creditors claim against the asset. So someone has a claim against you. What could be some common examples of liabilities that all companies will have? Well, accounts payable is a very common liability. It's a promise to pay later. 
Why? Because you purchased arising from credit purchases of merchandise, supplies, equipment, services. You purchased something and each supplier will have a separate record titled payable supplier name. So for example, if you purchase from Office Depot, you're going to have accounts or office supplies. Office Depot is gone. You're going to have accounts payable, office supplies, and you keep track of office supplies. If you purchase from Best Buy, you're going to have accounts payable, Best Buy buy so those are your vendors so you're going to have a sub account for each one of them because you need to keep track of who you owe the money to so accounts payable is a liability notes payable very similar to accounts payable <laughs> here accounts payable is you purchased something promise to pay because you made a purchase notes payable is a written promise to pay a specific amount of time in the future Deferring from accounts payable due to its formal contract and interest requirement. It's the opposite of accounts receivable. So let's assume you went to Best Buy. Let's make it simple. You went to Best Buy. It's a retail store. And you made a purchase. Well, Best Buy says, okay, pay me later. That's an accounts payable. You went to Best Buy. And you purchased $1,000 worth of merchandise. You went to Best Buy. You made the same purchase, $1,000. Best Buy says, guess what? Sign a promise to pay plus interest. So you're going to pay me the $1,000. I'm going to give you some time to pay, but you're going to pay me the amount plus interest. Here we are dealing with a notes payable, not accounts payable. It's a form of a loan, basically. So when you go to the bank, usually notes payable, when you go to the bank, they make you sign a note to promise to pay back. That's a notes payable. But also notes payable could arise from making a purchase because the, the vendor, the seller, want, want, wants you to do what? To pay interest. That's basically what it is. Unearned revenue account. Now, this is a new account. Now, it doesn't sound like the other two. It doesn't sound payable. Payable. Because payable indicate it's a liability. Unearned revenue. I want you to focus on the word unearned. It, have, it has not been earned. Here's what happens sometimes. Sometimes customers, or you would require the customer to pay you up front. So you'll ask the customer, give me the cash. So you have the cash before you perform the service. So let's assume someone asks you to paint their home, just for the sake of illustration. You'd say, great, pay me $1,000 now, and next month I will paint your home. Well, you have the cash. You have the cash in your hand. Is this revenue? And the answer is no. Why not? Because you did not perform the work yet. So what's going to happen is you have the cash, and now you're going to have unearned revenue of $1,000. So you record the cash as a liability of $1,000. Now, what's going to happen a month later? A month later, you are going to paint the home. Once you paint the home, you are going to reduce unearned revenue by a thousand and you are going to increase earned revenue by a thousand. So first you have cash and unearned revenue. Then you're going to have unearned revenue and revenue. Think about when you purchase an airline ticket or let's assume you purchase a ticket to a concert. You pay for it up front. You pay whatever you paid, 100, 152, or you're going to a sports game. You pay for that event up front. When the company, when the sports team gets the money, yes, they have the cash, but they don't have revenue. They have unearned revenue. They have a liability. What is their liability? Their liability is to perform the work. Once they perform the work, once the teams play, once the performer perform at the concert, once you paint the home, you have revenue. So there's many examples of unearned revenue, including advanced payment for magazine subscription, for rent, season's ticket, any any time you pay before you receive the service, the company that you pay to will have unearned revenue. Now the, the party that made the payment, they have what? They have a prepaid. So if you made the payment, you have a prepaid. For the other party, it's unearned revenue, unearned revenue. So, unearned revenues are initially recorded as liabilities, such as unearned subscription, unearned rent. Then they are transferred to revenue. We'll see that later on. We're just planting the seed for the future. Accrued liabilities. This is a, a very common 
a very common group of liabilities. Accrued liabilities is any expense that you owe, amounts owed but not yet paid, such as wages, taxes, interest, any expense. What does that mean? Let's assume your rent was due today, whatever that today is, and you don't have money to pay. Well, if you don't have money to pay, do you still have an expense? Well, do I? Yes, you do. If you have the obligation to pay, you have an expense. You have an expense. Now, let's assume a thousand dollar. Now, if you don't pay this expense, this expense becomes a liability. So you have an expense and you have a liability. What's the alternative? The alternative is if you have an expense, you pay it. If you pay it, you pay it with cash. So if you have an expense and you pay it as cash, the expense is gone. But if you have an expense and that expense is not paid, amount owed, it becomes a liability. And those are accrued liabilities. Accrued liabilities are very common, are very common in businesses, and they are kept for kept in a separate liability accounts. We're going to look at them later. There are many, 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 many accrued liabilities. Again, we are planting the seed for later. Important concept. Now, beside assets and beside liabilities, we have equity accounts. I am not going to cover the equity accounts in depth because I did cover the equity accounts in the prior session when we looked at equity. And remember, I, I, kind, of, I kind of slipped and I, I, I stopped talking about accounts. <laughs> the reason I'm going over these accounts to remind you, we keep track of accounts payable. We keep track of notes payable. We keep track of unearned revenue. We keep track of our accrued liabilities. We keep track of our land account, equipment account, supplies, prepaid. So this is the whole purpose of, of going over these accounts because we keep track of them. I'm not going to go over the equity because we did go over equities. I just wanted to emphasize this point. Two more important concepts that we need to be familiar with from this lesson are ledger and chart of accounts. We kind of touch upon the ledger or the general ledger. The ledger or the general ledger is a collection of all accounts and their balances. So where do you keep track of your account balances in the general ledger? I'm going to show you a sample and we're going to work with actually general ledger later. So number of accounts in a ledger depends on how, how big and how diverse is your business. A small company could have 20 accounts. Large companies might have thousands of accounts. And I still remember, I had a student that she worked at Air Product. It's one of those big companies, Air Product, in Allentown, Pennsylvania. And she brought the chart of accounts to her, to the class, that's a long time ago, to show us how large, it was like literally a book, like hundreds of pages, just of accounts, just, just the account name and their number, account name and number, just to show us how large the chart of account can be. For example, just to kind of, just to kind of illustrate the point a little bit further. For example, your cash, you could have 50 or 100 cash accounts. You could have cash number 1,101, 10,102. You could have different cash accounts, many hundreds, if not thousands for some companies because you need to keep track of all the cash accounts. So that's why large companies could have a lot of accounts. Now, this is the ledger or the general ledger. Then we have a term called charts of account. Charts of account, actually, she bought, she did not bring the ledger. No way she can bring the ledger. She brought the chart of accounts. <laughs> it's a list of all the ledger account, each assigned a unique identification number. So, what's the chart of account? All assets, for example, all assets account will start with the number one. That's why I said cash will have, for example, the number 100 or 1,000. In her situation, the cash account were in the 10,000 number. Like the cash account, the first cash account number is 10,000. Then 10,001. Then 10,002. I'm just making this up. And you could have 50 cash accounts up until 10,050. Only cash account. But all assets, not only cash, all assets start with the number one. Liability number two. Equities start with three, which is common stock and retained earnings. Revenues four. Expenses five. Now you could have gains and losses, six and seven, but we don't have to worry about this. So let me show you actual ledgers and chart of accounts. This is a partial chart of account of assets. This company, cash, account receivable, supplies. Notice cash 101, accounts receivable 102, supplies 103. So assets start with the number one, and that's also in the real world. And this is a partial list. You have many, many, many other accounts, and this is where she brought the books of all the accounts, hundreds of accounts, 
just the list of accounts. So this is the chart of accounts. Now, what is the general ledger? The general ledger is where you keep track of each account separately. Cash. What number is cash? Cash is number 101. This is the general ledger for cash. This is the transaction that took place on 7-1-2024. The owner invested money. Now, don't worry about debits and credits, but debits means cash went up. Credit means cash went down, but we'll talk about this in the next recording. So here what happened is cash went up and we have a $10,000 balance. On July 3rd, we purchased equipment and we reduced cash 2,500. Now the cash is 7,500. 7.5, 7, we made the sale and we received cash 1,500. Cash is 9,000. So notice what's happening. The general ledger is keeping track, as I told you, of the cash account. Well, let's take a look at the general ledger for accounts receivable. This is the account receivable general ledger 102. 7.5, we made the sale on credit. Well, we increased our account receivable, don't worry about why it's increase and decrease, and we'll talk about that later. And the balance is 2000. The customer paid. When the customer paid, we reduced our balance. Now their balance is 500. So the, the general ledger for accounts receivable keeps track of accounts receivable and their balances. This is the a partial list for liabilities, and this is the chart of account, uh, the general ledger for the accounts payable. This is the chart of accounts, a partial chart of accounts for equity. And this is the general ledger for the equity account, keeping track of the common stock specifically. This is the chart of accounts of revenues. We have two accounts. And this is the service revenue, a general ledger balance. This is the chart of account of expenses. These are partial, obviously. And these are the general ledger for rent expense, which is account number 501, salaries expense 502. So you could only imagine we could have hundreds, if not thousands of accounts. All the accounts with the identification number called a chart of accounts, the account where we keep track of changes, it's called the general ledger. Basically, the general ledger is the account itself, keeping track of changes in the account itself. Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. A company receive advanced payment from customers for services to be provided in the future. Which account should change upon receiving the payment? Now, I can tell you without looking, cash should change. Why? Because I received cash. But let's see if cash here. Accounts receivable, service revenue, and earned revenue prepaid. Well, cash is not. So it must be cash and something else. So cash is not there. That's not one of my answers. So what else would, what else would change if we received cash? and we did not provide the service yet. Is it account receivable? What's account receivable? Account receivable when we perform the work and they promise to pay us. That's not the definition here. Service revenue. Service revenue is when we actually do the work, we can increase service revenue, recognize service revenue. We didn't do any work yet. If anything here, we received the money, but we didn't do any work. C, unearned revenue. What's unearned revenue? Unearned revenue is when you receive money before performing your work. Wow, okay, this, this is what it sounds like. I think C is the correct answer. Prepaid services, well, a company received advanced payment. The company did not pay anything. Prepaid is for payment. Prepaid, whoever paid you, whoever made that payment to you will have a prepaid. But if you receive the money, it's unearned revenue. So here we are dealing with unearned revenue. And just to plant the seed for the future, unearned revenue turns into revenue. Why? Because you are going to do the work. Now what happens if you don't do the work? You do the work or you return the money. It's, that, it's either or. You perform your work. That's your obligation. If you don't want to perform the work for one reason or another, that's fine. Perform or return the money because you have an obligation to either return it or work. So this is what happened to unearned revenue. It eventually comes earned revenue. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures. Look at additional multiple choice, additional resources, lectures. That's going to help you, especially if you are a financial accounting student. Invest in yourself. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.